imagine if there was a way for you to get me to watch what was the show with the the uh, the toys or something yeah andor brunch hit it boys <laughs> I'm sick, and I'm always extra self-conscious when I'm sick because when I listen to somebody doing a show when they're sick, I always judge the fuck out of them. I'm always like, now what is it with this fucking person? You do sound sick, but I will say, uh, for the benefit of the listeners, they can't smell you, and you have, like, the sick smell. Oh, really? Yeah, you get that little, like... Like a the it's like a like a little extra heat coming off your body, like a little like smell of sickness. I'm this is loving a that. Horrible thing to wait to <laughs> reveal on the podcast. Also, I don't know what the sick smell is. You know, my nose famously doesn't work, so I don't know what most smells are. I hope that people know what I'm talking about. Like, there is definitely like a. Usually, I can smell it on myself when I'm like a little bit snick and sick. Yeah. And I don't know whether it's that's like, when you get a stomach ache from eating too many Snickers. Snickers. Yeah, yeah, I got I got the snick. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, I don't know if it's like maybe the like the the drip in the nose or something that like you can smell. But yeah, there's definitely like a musk that comes with illness. Oh, great! Well, you got that, pal. I also smell bad, and uh, my well, a button fell off my shirt. So halfway through the day, I just had to pivot into like being a sex symbol as well well it's sick. a good shirt to be wearing to pivot into, into that though yeah it's like classic 70s deej kind of type thing but yeah uh but you don't get that though if you're like watching somebody do a show and they're like sick or you're listening to a podcast and one of the hosts is sick where it's just like you you somehow think they're like even a little more annoying you're victim blaming people who get sick yeah you're just like god this fuck this fucker never has it together do they i you certainly don't yeah um, but i don't think that i don't usually think about that with other people i'm just like oh that's it's a bummer they're feeling a little under the weather good for them for powering through Okay, well... Credit to you for always powering. Yeah, again. every time I'm sick, and this is the most I've thought, I'm like, all right, there, we need to have, like, an emergency, uh, like, a different version. I would still do the podcast, but, like, just a different way of doing the podcast when I'm sick. So I have to do as little... Not, not that I don't want to do anything, but just I don't want this, like part of it i mean credit to you this is the you just mentioned like maybe like an hour ago for the first time that you weren't feeling great yeah and usually when you're sick or any guy when any guy's sick it's of all course. you fucking hear about of course we've talked about this before like guys get sick and they have the sniffles mm. and that's all they can it's their entire personality until they're healthy again yeah uh, a, a woman gets sick and she's just like this is a tuesday i'm, I'm never feel great yeah <laughs> Um, it's probably an exhaust, it's, it's probably a combination of allergies and, uh, exhaustion just from, I don't know, this time of year. I, there hasn't been a sporting event on, I think in the last like three months that I haven't watched. <laughs> I've watched every men's, women's, like everything basketball game. If a man, woman, or child has played basketball, I've watched it, watched every hockey game. Watched every ba like NBA basketball game, so that plus allergies equals not feeling great. But even still, like I woke up this morning and I was like, Oilers, <laughs> I know, and, dude, and Celtics. It's crazy that this ha that this happens every single year, where it's just like it's just like being in a fucking candy store, man. Yeah, I had this. I actually had this uh, this conversation with Ellen like literally last night. She because she was like. Uh, what time are you going to be able to get to bed tonight? And I was like, ah, probably like 2 a.m. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. And I was like, nothing to apologize for. This is I get to watch the, the fucking best. Yeah. Like my day starts at 7 p.m. And it's awesome. Uh, yeah, like it's it, it there. There are very few things that like fill me with joy. And the start of the playoffs, the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs just fill me with joy because it's something that I could get to just like put on my calendar every single day, look forward to the end of the day every day and be like, and get to go to bed and be like, wow, that was awesome. And then it's, wake up and do it again. I think you'll like it. It's, it's probably better doing it a hundred percent remote. 
if you like if if you were doing all of this and going like from place to place to place for this whole time after I mean you you've done uh conference finals and Stanley Cup finals, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That's a perfect amount because you're probably very exhausted. Like Dude, even by the alone, I was like, right. get me home. Yeah. Like I was going to say like game after the media party of, which is before the Stanley cup final begins, you're probably like, all right, cool. I, I I'm cool for this to end yeah, any second. Yeah. But I mean like that's, it's, it's never like the, it's never like exhaustion from the games or the sport. It's exhaustion from the, the parties on like e- on like the the off days where they like the NHL has like these events or you just go out with the media people and you you wake up and you're like fuck you're starting from behind cuz you're hung over or whatever uh or it's exhaustion from the travel like yeah. the travel takes so much out of you so yeah you're right like when you're remote it's ju- like I'm just looking forward to the games I'm staying at home I'm not not drinking I'm not like I've been smoking like a little bit, but like it's that's it. Like, and I feel great the next day, spry, and then we do our work and then we move on with our day. Yeah. It's the best. I'm also, I'm in like a long termish by now break from like getting after it. Mm-hmm. But even the other night, um, we went to Portland over the weekend, saw Father John Misty and that band of his. And I had like one and a half edibles and like, over the course of a day, like one and a third beer. And the next day I was like, oh boy. Really? Tough guy. Not no, not as far as like I don't think hungover or anything, but just like so tired anyway from this stretch of life that it's like, man, it doesn't take much to I'll just say like it confirmed I'm glad I am in a break from getting after it. Like I if if I had gone hard just from like going to Portland and eating is enough for me to a feel like I'm on drugs because you can eat everything there and b like the I, I don't know maybe I'm just getting old but the idea of getting up in the morning driving someplace and then doing something that will make you additionally tired like by the end of the night I was I fell right the heck to sleep. My yes. Guy. Yeah. I mean, it, I, uh, it was, is interesting because I feel like I drank and ate and just like behaved way worse than I usually do. But like, I was never in the mindset of like, I'm doing bad stuff. Oh, no. So I think that saved me from the hangover. Yeah. It's like, I, I mentally duped my mind into believing I was behaving myself. But like, I probably had like, Eight to ten beers, a couple edibles, ate like everything. Yeah. And I woke up the next morning feeling fine because like I just wasn't there to do that stuff. It was just it happened because I was in Portland having the best time. Yeah. And we were with a bunch of people and everybody was in check. Er- everybody was good and it rocked. I mean, that band is the best. They everyone has seemingly been in that band for like a long time so they just they have every move down that would that like that might have been the best father john misty concert i've ever seen i would say it was definitely crazy. definitely the best that i've seen uh is like probably the fifth time mm-hmm. that i'd seen them uh seen them with the la phil harmon mm-hmm. and uh this somehow like the arrangement of the of the band uh this time around was just the best it was the tightest. The yeah. set list was incredible. Um, like the horns, the dudes on horns yeah, were man. so good. And I just think I felt like he found a way to enhance a lot of the songs to like their fullest degree. And I think we said that after the L.A. show, uh, the L.A. Phil show, where we were like, damn, he enhanced a lot of these songs. And I feel like it. it it was like ratcheted up a notch even from that this time around. So if you have not seen father John Misty with his band at this point, and you like father John Misty, absolutely recommend because they are still peaking. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's the thing. Like you, you could think, all right, well then if they've been together for a while, maybe they are just kind of doing the same thing. But even like after the show, I was like, fuck, how is it that every time I hear I'm writing a novel, it has some sort of different life? And when they when when he was younger, it was a lot more frantic, and then it got a little chill, and now it's just like straight rocking and rolling. 
And I believe that was like the big introduce the band song. Like everyone took a solo Mm -hmm. and it just fucking rocked. Yeah. I mean, everybody got a chance to shine uh, uh, during that show, which was very cool. I like when like each person in the band is like, okay, fucking go. Yeah. And everybody had that opportunity. It also like big, big toss up as to like which version of father John Misty, which Josh Tillman you're going to get on any given night. Sure. Because some nights he's like, Okay, I'm showing up and I'm doing my songs. Get and he in, fucking, get out. <laughs> he kills, but yeah. like he just doesn't do any extra work. And then other times he's chatty, he's making some jokes. This time was by far the most engaging I've ever seen him with an audience. And like he just seemed like very like heartfelt and like genuine. Like wow, what a great crowd. He even played one more song than than like right. they were even planning on doing in the encore. So like. Just gave us a freebie, was making some jokes, telling some stories. Seemed like he was in a very good mood. What was uh, was the freebie, the ideal husband? Yeah. Yeah, man. More stories than you're usually going to get out of him. Like mm-hmm. He explained what a lot of the songs meant, which I always think is cool. But also with an artist like him, I'd rather like think I got it right on my own. Leave it up to t- interpretation. People right. like a little bit of mystery sometimes. But he did. I do, I wouldn't think that he would ever explain this song, but he really did do some hand-holding for uh, the night Josh Tillman came to our apartment. <laughs> yeah. He explained, like, the part you want to, you need to pay attention to is when the guy's talking about himself and how he's struggling to take off a girl's bra. So when he's spending the rest of the song talking about how much this girl sucks, like, maybe it's a little more about him than... Uh, <laughs> It is about anybody else. And then he had a, he was like, so he takes it all out on this girl who is probably fine. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. After he destroys that girl, the whole song. But yeah, they were, uh, they were fucking awesome. They played a new song and he said, uh, all right, this is a new song. It's nine minutes long. And I was like, I bet it is nine minutes long. It sounds like him. Yep. Then they started it and it was a disco song. And I was like, all right, you just joking with us. There isn't going to be a nine-minute disco song. That's never existed. And then for the next nine minutes, he played a disco song. And, and like, it was it, great. And it was never not a disco song either. There yeah. wasn't like a, here's a disco song. All right, let's take like a four-minute break and yeah. make you figure out what the hell is happening next. No, nah, it was disco the pretty whole way straight. through, buddy. <laughs> yeah, pretty. it was like a disco version of Leaving L.A. where it was just kind of like... A lot of the same thing yeah. uh, and is given to you in different ways. And like at that time, the edibles were working. Yeah. And uh, time tends to either stand still or slow down when you're when you're on those. And so it felt like there was like a 30 minute disco song. And at some point during that song, I kind of like spaced out and wondered, had I just gone to a disco show and not really not had really like misremembered what I was signing yeah. up for? Those guys could do disco if they wanted to. Those guys, Those guys could, could do, do anything. anything they wanted to. The song that hit most for me, and it was probably because it was as like the edibles were kicking in, was Chloe. And getting that song, a little like fartsy little like type of shit when an edible is kicking in, mm-hmm. felt quite great. And Ooh. that's like as close to inebriated <laughs> as I have or will feel in the last like uh many months so it was a nice little delight because that song like, I, I like that song a lot but it doesn't mean uh, a ton to me mm-hmm. so seeing a beloved artist do a kind of ridiculous thing in a good room too everything sounded so know. good i don't know that, cause that that one came uh that one came after chateau lobby and yeah. chateau lobby always just yeah. it's impossible to follow chateau lobby and i think this is the best performance i'd seen it it they them give of that song and that song's very important to me so those those horns man yep so fucking good uh we when we got to our hotel we were told that uh, our room had been upgraded yeah and i said no shit happens to me all the time why don't you give me these details and she said we can't remember if this is actually what she said but we've decided she said you'll be in a snack room i think that's what she said i was like half paying attention but i those words were used. She Maybe was, not in those or, in that order, yeah. but like both of those words registered. You'll be in a room of snacks. Yes. She was like, when you get up there, you're going to see uh, a bunch of bottles of water. Those are free. Mm-hmm. We're like, all right, that's... Good start. Yeah, that's... I, I hope. <laughs> and she was like, and then you're going to see a bunch of snacks. Mm-hmm. Those two are free. You may take and eat those snacks. Do not worry 
about being charged for the snacks. So we got up there. She ain't lied a day in her life. There was M and M's. There were there was a Cliff Bar. There were some chips, some Doritos. Doritos. You got into some chips at some point. Uh, yeah, I, right before I went to bed. Right, right before I brushed my teeth. Very smart decision. Ah, uh, and now so that was like a big. Uh, I'm not inebriated moment mm-hmm. where like it was like long day. Got back to the hotel at the end of the night, and I famously eat a lot and whenever I want. But I was like, it didn't even have a thought in my head to reach for any sort of food. Well, I th- t- to be fair, we got back to the room. We shared a room. Yeah. Two beds, folks. Yeah. Uh, shared a room. For now. <laughs> you... You hit the bathroom first to get ready for bed. Yeah. So uh, I was what were you gonna standing do? there with my dick in my hand. You're bored. Yeah. I had to eat some Doritos. No one to talk to. <laughs> yeah. Get into the Doritos. There were M and M's. Did you? I told you. I was like, I took hey, M and M's. I can't. Took them for the road. Yeah. Good. I was like, I can't take all these snacks. Took a took M and M's and a vitamin water for the road on Sunday. Sat down, watched some hockey on Sunday afternoon. Had some M and M's. Drank some vitamin water. Shout out to uh, the lady at the counter I, for hooking us up with the snack room. I took a Diet Coke, and uh, it was great. I had oh, it yeah. while watching some hockey later myself. And we had uh, other friends staying at the hotel. Did not get snacks. Did not get the snack room. Uh, what we did do at the hotel, though, was take incredible pictures. Oh, because yeah. Because you yeah, took they had a good... two of the best pictures of me that have ever been taken. Me and my sick fucking Buffalo Sabres goat head jersey. Yep. So th- those are on the gram if you want to see him. Uh, yeah, we to, had a make famous sure you head to the gram after this episode. That's right. Uh, we had a one of our famous Portland photo duels this week, uh, and went a lot closer than the uh, the first time. Yeah, true. Because uh, first time, sometimes they do they do say the artist is only as good as his equipment. Yep. Uh, first time we were both just working with iPhones. The mm-hmm. first photo duel. And I can make some magic happen with an iPhone. You famously cannot. Nope. You take horrible pictures with yeah. an iPhone. Yeah. I uh, did bring my my Sony camera this time. I'm getting into... I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast yet, but like, I'm steering into the photography. Good. Like, I bought books. I bought like a bunch of lenses. Shout out to the Patreon. Helped expense that. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Yes, please. Uh, so you like you're already paying for some content. You got you're getting great photos of the both of us. Uh, even my, the the new lens on the camera is so good that even DJ yeah, I was like fuck effortlessly up. taking pretty good pictures. Yeah, so that's when you know a lens is good. So we're we're probably gonna have more photo wars coming up, like probably this weekend because we're going back to Portland Hummer. for Houndmouth. Probably take some pa- pictures of our pals from the band. Uh, stuff like that. So follow us on the gram. Uh, also, it's Monday and people are pissed. Still absolutely fucking humming Crushing. on the gram. We are. I How think did it take just... us until now to think to just copy another podcast? <laughs> That's right. Um, we're like we're coming up on 2000 gram followers. So Good. I'm very excited about that. Hopefully give some some life to that social media platform, which we have never figured out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, j- also get on the brunch YouTube. We didn't see any movies this week because uh, th- there just isn't anything worth doing right now. Movie-wise. I wouldn't say that. Like, I I really want to see how to blow up a pipeline. And like, well, we can always find shit that yeah. that we'd want to watch. It's more just about like, I don't have any fucking time with, yeah. with playoffs. Like, it's dominating my life, but in like the best way possible. You know, probably in the next, like probably in like two weeks is when the the load will be lightened and and we'll be able to to hit movies again. A little rundown of the stuff we did in Portland, Maine, because uh, a lot of the listeners like Portland, and uh, a few listeners came up during the show and said, "Hey, I didn't listen to Father John Misty before you, so uh, thanks, very nice of uh, people to say that." Uh, we hit even tide, as you're always gonna do. Yes. Uh, of of course. You know what? Uh, we got got the usual suspects there. A uh, they had a a hand pie for dessert that probably shouldn't say this because it sounds like we're uh, criticizing them. But they said they came out and they said sorry. The hand pie will be just a few minutes. It exploded. <laughs> yeah. So then I said, Never a I good was sign. like twenty five percent in on this hand pie. I am now 
two hundred percent in on this hand. Like now, I could not wait. Yeah, it ex- it, it, there pies, was a threat of it exploding. Good pies that introduce the threat of explosions. Even better. Uh, who doesn't like a little danger with their dessert? It was great. If we go back there, I'll be getting that again. Yeah, I mean the the hand pie with the ice cream was so good. And if you're wondering what a hand pie is, a McDonald's. Uh, it's like a McDonald's apple pie, like basically a hot pocket apple pie. Uh, in that like little long rec- yeah. rectangular shape with a little ice cream on top, yeah. like no cardboard. And though. they were not, they were not, uh, they were not like uh, shy about that or, or ashamed of that. Yeah, they were like, we asked a gourmet about version it. of the. McDonald's they were like, you pie. know, the McDonald's apple pie. Yeah, we did that, and yeah. we were like, say no more. They're awesome. Uh, obviously, everyone knows their lobster roll. If you ever Incredible. get there, get the lobster roll. But something I've been doing because I don't do the uh, the oysters, I will order. For the table, a their fried chicken sandwich is amazing. It has maple Chinese mustard. Break off a little bit of that to go with your lobster roll. Fantastic. We also hit uh, Oxbow, which is a favorite. Always a great place. Good hangs. Got some merch there. Incredible Pete's merch. got his sweatshirt on right now. Uh, they, they had shirts. They had a t-shirt that was very me, and they had a sweatshirt that was very Pete. Uh, both were purchased, mm-hmm. so that's exciting. Then we uh, headed to the snack room for a little bit. Uh, Wilson County Barbecue. We end up there pretty often now. Great everything, but their barbecue dusted fries. Ridiculous. So good. Uh, I had um I had the Kansas City burnt ends. Yeah, same. and those were fucking tender as very hell. tender. Yeah. yeah, we were like the the most tender burnt ends. It it seemed as though they weren't burnt, like they <laughs> were sauteed right. ends. Yeah, they were somehow burnt, but also like just melt in your mouth. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the most important part of the rundown of places we went, I wanted to uh, thank Edibles because after. Oh, uh, we were with friends who wanted to watch basketball, and uh, we there was a place in mind. There was a sports bar in mind, and a friend had said before we got there, hey, just checked it out, and there's a lot of young men outside. We were like, what? Informal wear. Yeah, informal wear. Which, that's never things that you want to hear. So we were like, what could this mean? We walk in. There's a lot of young people in there. Mm-hmm. It's I, packed. I didn't see any formal wear. Me neither. Yeah. Uh, and the subs were bumping. Yeah. It oh, was yeah. extremely loud. It was legitimately a frat party. And we were up there. We went up. We get, we went up the stairs and everything. We were all ready to get settled in. And I was in the front of the pack. And I just turned around and said something to the, to the effect of, like, we leave. Right? <laughs> and everybody was like, oh, is there talk of leaving? Let's go anywhere else. Yeah. Even though this is like... <laughs> Portland at probably like 1145 places are closing soon. You got to find certain places that are even going to stay open. I was so happy that I was lightly stoned because if not, I probably would have been like, uh, whatever, just be agreeable. Uh, but I had a like get the fuck out of there sort of thing. And everybody else was just waiting to hear it. So yeah, I, I was for sure waiting to hear it. I, it's the music was too loud. Like the lights were too dark. It was the 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 crowd was too young. I didn't even know that young people hung out in Portland. Yeah, which, I was. Like, I, I just didn't. I'd never seen anything like that in Portland. Like it was like it was legitimately like college age kids that were there to like get fucked up. Yeah, and like I I've never seen that in Portland. It's it's like a very chill, like very um like young adult city. Yeah. Um, it, like family friendly for the most part like that was crazy that was like a oh how do we get to this part of town even though it was like the same part of town they were like we're trying to get fucked up i was like we're trying to see who memphis put in uh with dylan brooks out of the game (laughs) but they had tvs and stuff so i was like fuck maybe do we stay we ended up finding a nice old place hung out chatted had a it was just a lovely lovely day Mm -hmm. in portland i just i love days or weekends or little trips where i'm just like i'm very glad i did all of that. Yeah, same. There was never like, a, I need to take a break from my friends or being overwhelmed by anything. Concert was great. People were great. What a time. And we'll be back next weekend in case anybody is doing the uh, how mouth thing. Uh, they are making a play about the making of Jaws. This was brought to our attention. This was slid across our desk. Yeah, and you know my first, uh, my first question always when it comes to stuff like this. Hey, 
Do we really need to know this story? Oh, that's a, a favorite a of a yeah. favorite of mine. Yeah, does this story really need to be told? The answer is yes, but I uh, because we know the story, the the origin story of the filmmaking of Jaws. I want to know. Are they going to tell it like it is? Yes, that's my question. Are they going to tell the real story? CBS News. The play is a behind-the-scenes look at the three main actors in the Spielberg movie. Robert Shaw, Roy Scheider, and Richard Dreyfuss. It's a bad the three start. actors had a tense time with many frustrating delays due to the mechanical shark malfunctioning. The name of it is The Shark is Broken. Tell you whose name I didn't hear in any of Dick that. Richards. Didn't hear Dick Richards. You know what else I didn't hear? A whale. I didn't hear whale. A lot of, heard, heard the word frustration, heard the word Spielberg, heard the words uh, tense. This would be Never like... Never heard the word whale. This would be like if we went to record this episode, you had a cast on, and I started it by saying, hey, everybody, just a heads up, I'm sick, and then proceeded <laughs> with whatever. It's like you're making a jaw, a movie about the making of Jaws, and you're not going to include... Or even base the whole thing on <laughs> right the greatest fun fact in the history of film. I true. I truly don't know. We should get Dick Richards on the pod. Be like, <sighs> they aren't telling your story. We are here to tell your story. We kind of tell your story every week, yeah, but right. we are here to tell your the, story. The question there is whether he wants the story to be told because yeah. there is. There could be an element of like Dick Richards wanting to sweep this one under the rug. It's probably not his finest moment, especially in hindsight. What if we had him direct an episode of Brunch? We like hyped it up. It was like Brunch X Richards. I, I'm in. I just, I mean, I don't know if it'll be any good. I Let's mean, if, see. If the height of his game, he kept fucking up sharks and whales. I'm not sure if he'd be no, totally on the ball these days. Doing, uh, he was doing Coca Cola stuff. Yeah. He is 87 years old. Mm -hmm. Might not be too savvy with like Streamlabs or Premiere Pro, but he could shoot it on film. Yo, we should Brunch do an on episode film? on film. We should do, yeah, we should, and we should like, record tape. I mean, like, however he wants to do it. If we're if we're doing brunch times, Dick Richards, we have to trust him. Yeah, and there's also trusting someone to fuck up. Like, hey, right, yeah. we want to hire you to do a brunch episode just to see what your interpretation would be of this whole thing because you famously thought that Jaws was a whale. <laughs> right. So uh, I would love to know what you'd think this podcast right, is. Right, if we wanted it to be, like, really shiny and perfect, like, we could get, like, PTA to do it. But, yeah. like, we want Dick Richards because, like, we like chaos. Just like it's why we like the Edmonton Oilers. We don't want to see the Edmonton Oilers play a perfect series and win in four games. No. Just and it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> if we did, we'd be constantly disappointed. Not going to do that. Uh, we should see if we can get anything with Richards, because he's 87, and uh, I mean, just as a matter of fact, the, the clock's kind of ticking there. So if, if we don't get him sooner, then maybe he's not going to want to do a podcast down the road. So yeah, right. let's get him. Let's try to work with him. See what he can do for us. Yeah, I also would I would like to clarify and and confirm his feelings on the making of the making of Jaws. What if he was trying to get out? What do you? What like, if he had another like Coke commercial lined up that was getting in the way of this? Well, it sounds like shit was frustrating, and yeah. it sounds like shit wasn't working properly. I don't know if he ever got to that stage. He showed up. He <laughs> saw he saw Dreyfus being a little <laughs> prima donna, and he was like, uh, "Hey, everybody, yeah. don't forget the whale needs to be scary." <laughs> Hey boss, you hear that? The whale needs to be scary. And we can ask him about uh we can ask him about his thoughts on the new Brennan Fraser movie, The Shark. Yes. Man, I hope we get Richards. We're gonna try to we'll have him next week. If you didn't hear <laughs> last week's episode, check that out because we got the great Matt Mayer. Yes. And we talked a lot of Affleck, we talked a lot of uh Damon, and most importantly, we talked a lot of Mayer with him. That's right. That John guy, Mayer. He talked a lot about John. He said Mayer. his dad's name is John. Yeah, that's right. His dad's name is John Mayer. So which he's got a little John Mayer in the family. I wish my dad's name was John Mayer. In that I wish John Mayer was my dad. Yeah. Um uh did you end up watching Succession this week or no? Yes. Oh my god. Not to be a I think we talked about the spoiler thing, mm -hmm. but I legitimately like brought this to therapy yesterday where I was like What did you get spoiled for you? I we're a few days removed now, so we can yeah. talk about spoilers. So uh the repartee between 
uh, Siobhan and Tom. It's not really a spoiler. Just say I, I know. It's something that you but, would like to experience for yourself for the first time. So there, there weren't plot spoilers, but there was just episode spoilers. I don't know, man. Really? Yeah. Like if it if it's not like a plot spoiler, you can't expect people to not talk about uh, talk about the 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 show. Uh, you the know. night it comes out, I'm sorry. Like I I've learned from this because I used to do shit like this too. But just to do it, and I did this with drinking. Legitimately, I took a break from drinking. Just to make sure I was able to do it. Uh, because from time to time, I'll just take a little break from drinking. And I just hadn't taken a break from drinking in a while. So I needed to know, like, hey, can I do this? Everybody, I think, maybe we could pick one day of the whole year when a big TV show is coming out. Shut the fuck up about it. Just to see if we can do it. Because we don't know. We don't know because we we always talk as soon as something comes out. We're tweeting about it and making sure everybody knows we saw it. Just to make sure, just to see if we can do it, the next Succession episode, fucking wait until 5 p.m. Eastern the next day. Because it's not just... But I, it's it's different. Like you You're talk, fucking you're it up ta- for people who, are, who can't see it live on the West Coast. That is ridiculous. Well, yeah. And, like, I, I do think that, like, there is an element, like, some spoilers are not equal to... Of course. ...to other spoilers. And if you're talking about, like, just like dialogue spoilers that don't really spoil the plot. People are what people, the fuck is succession, my dude? There's no plot. You just said it it didn't spoil the plot. There is no plot to that show. All you watch that there show was, for dialogue. There was a there was certainly in a one plot episode in, this season. There was a certain no, there was a plot in this episode. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? People watch this show, and I'm, I'm not saying there is actually no plot. But I, like, I just I don't think that this you is can not t- a plot heavy show. This is a right. dialogue show for sure. But like. I don't think that you can say, like, nobody's allowed to talk about this show on Sunday night. I'm not saying nobody's allowed to. I'm saying, can you try to do it? Can you try? And if not, I'm not even saying all Sunday night. My idea is wait till five the next day, which even is unfair for couples who watch the show together. But wait until four hours after it airs, so or three hours, whatever the math is, so you can react the same time people watching it live can react. Yeah, I mean, that's why time zones exist, though. <laughs> and, like, uh, in California, can you watch, like, HBO Max as soon as it hits in Eastern? Eastern? I think you can. I would guess yes. I would but... guess that most people aren't watching, like, as it airs on television these days. You probably got a lot of HBO Max people. But, like, really, what is the benefit? And I know this is a tough point to make as a content creator, but what is the fucking benefit of immediately saying, "Hey, yeah, I saw that show." If it can ruin somebody else's time, I mean, I think that like part of the experience, like just like sports, is like going on Twitter and talking about it and sharing your opinions and sharing your thoughts on the episode, shit you liked and stuff like that. Like, you know, I, I tend to be very careful about doing that, doing that stuff because I don't want to spoil. And also, like, I think that a lot of the times with TV shows and movies, I like to let it breathe and think about it for, for a that's little also bit before. My big, like, that's my biggest thing. Like I'll let people get their, their takes off. Like with, with music, I can have a pretty instant reaction, but other stuff I like well, to I, th- I, like actually m- music is different though, because music, I think it's cool to have, a uh, like someone document a take after one listen yeah because music changes for people Mm -hmm. over the course of many listens yes and sometimes i wonder like what did i think when i first heard this song that i now love after like two years like what was my experience like just after one listen and I know the answer to us a bunch of those things because I remember tweeting about them. Yeah. And like sometimes I want the fucking tweets back. Cause I'm just like, oh, this song that I said was awesome really wasn't that awesome, or vice versa, or whatever. So, you know, that's different. I, I just it's different. Twitter's such a w- in a weird place where like now before I would be able to say, like, I'm gonna stay off. I don't I, I don't feel like I have to stay off Twitter when like succession is on because I feel like I trust the people that I follow that they like, they won't spoil anything or they won't like, you know, they won't, they won't like ruin the experience for me. 
But now, like, I log on to Twitter and it's just fucking shit being thrown from everywhere that people I, I don't follow, people I've never seen before, spoiling shit and, like, just shit gets in your feed now. So, like, my thing is, like, if you don't want to see anything about a show, stay off Twitter. So I hate that. And I've had to tell people that. So I t- after the, uh, the third episode this season, my friends in my group t- uh, chat said, like, hey – Make sure if you haven't seen the show, stay off Twitter. And that's good to look out like that, but that shouldn't be the case. And I understand that episode was like such a big thing happened. So it's going to be tough and you probably do need to stay off Twitter in that every, case. In every episode is going to be like that from here out there. There's five episodes left. So every episode is going to have major implications. It's going to go somewhere and you're going to want to stay off Twitter if you're not watching it. Where but the that's problem the is... Night, the, the reason I wasn't watching of that hockey. is because the craziest hockey game was yeah. on that everybody was watching so and reacting to in real time. That, so and that's it was where... an Oilers game and like people fucking, that's the only thing Twitter needs me for is fucking Oilers content. <laughs> so if I'm staying off Twitter, then like, what the fuck? What, what, what's it all for? That's where the solution becomes a little bit more complicated where it's like, if you're doing something, if you're doing something else that you, you can be completely off Twitter, don't go on Twitter. Yeah. Don't be a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it, like if you're doing something else that also requires like a second screen experience or just like, you know, like me and you where you just kind of like do hockey stuff on Twitter, stay off Twitter isn't necessarily like the, the be all end all solution. There are ways, I guess, that you could like tailor your Twitter experience. Like you could go on TweetDeck and like remove the timeline for like three hours so that all oh. you see is like I your... still famously don't use TweetDeck. I rather that's, cr- that's crazy. Yeah. Like it, it, you could do TweetDeck and just remove like the actual timeline aspect of it where like you're firing off tweets basically into the void and only seeing what comes back at you in terms of mentions and interactions. That's a great idea. So my solution was going to be is there a way to mute photos? or like media because a lot of it is like people will so that's what i found what kept happening was people were doing stills from the episode and to me i more kind of like viewed that as like a flex that they know how to do that yeah right and now it's becoming so hard yeah before i used to be like any fucking moron with a pair of thumbs yeah. can screen cap a, a TV show. Now, like, oh no, like I spent a day, like we we put in when I uh, first famously left my job, and I was like, I had time to like teach myself how to do things. Mm-hmm. One of the things was like, all right, I'm going to spend hours and hours because there's no tutorial for this online. Like I'm actually going to like put my brain together <laughs> and order the right cables and think like what can i connect to what so i can uh, like back channel this sort of thing so that shit is hard you're gonna you might need to explain that to me after we get out out of here because like you know it is a process yeah and like i mean i know it's a process because i used to do it for you used uh, to do it for me and now yeah right i I need to do it for you (laughs) yeah and uh which is fair technology 100 pictures technology has gotten like crazy good in like a million different ways two ways in which i fucking hate it right now is that like the the blockers for like anytime you try to like screenshot a tv show that you're streaming or whatever it just goes black yeah because they don't want you like screen recording or streaming and i i understand that part of it but like such an integral part of the internet experience is sharing just still images from TV shows or movies or anything. Don't make it so hard. Figure out a way to, to find a middle ground there. And the other one is AI, which we don't yeah, even need to get into course. because that shit is just like, obviously, what I would, we need to chill out with that. What I would rather is uh, let me do the screen grab and let me screen record. And if I share something that is blocked, tell me then. You know? like, and th- That's what I like about... Um, that's what I like about like our podcast hosting service. If we accidentally put something in there or just like not accidentally, but unknowing or ignorantly have something in there that is somebody else's content that we're not yeah. allowed to share. It'll be like, it's Yo. very good about being like, hey, just a heads up. Uh, you're probably not allowed to use this. And we'll say sweet because one of my many fears is getting in trouble out of stupidity, which is knock on wood. 
the most likely way I would get in trouble. I don't think that I would get in trouble through malice. N- yeah, no, I ag- I agree. Uh, I think I have always had like this creeping fear that I'm just gonna one day up- end up in prison for like tax evasion, but like right it- by like accident. Yeah, we were telling the story to friends the other day. Uh, we fucked something up together. We fucked something up tax wise, and caught it years later, mm-hmm. and we're like. We have to tell the IRS. And we did. We like went to the IRS and we were like, we're so sorry. We owe you $430. (laughs) And we swear we didn't like you could check our accounts. We don't even have $130. So it's like not like we were doing anything with it. We're so fucking sorry. And they were just like, tight. Uh, If you want to give it to us, we're like, yes, we want to give it to you. (laughs) Jesus. Oh, we're so sorry. Arrest me, officer. (laughs) Yes, seriously. Um, they have bigger fish to fry, but yeah, we do they, do not want to end up in prison. I, yeah. There really should be a central service. That, like some company should just be like, we will let we will like bypass these things or whatever, and you can screen grab or you can screen you can screenshot and like we'll run it by whatever company or like we'll double check to see if it's okay. And you pay us a fee and like if it's cool. We'll give you the green light. If it's not, we'll just tell you, don't do that. Uh, a little feather in uh, my cap was when we did the steal my plane thing. Mm-hmm. I produced it so accurately that YouTube was like, hold on a second. That's that Lady Gaga song. No from- way. Yeah, yeah, no, it gave me like, uh, it was like, you're you're not getting a copyright strike, but just a heads up, we know you put a Lady Gaga song in here. And I was like... Yo, I didn't. Ed Sheeran should get that uh, that technology Ed for his Sheeran own albums. That, yes. <laughs> It'll be like, uh, this sounds like something I've heard before. And he'd be like, oh, shit, they know. <laughs> Fuck, man. That'd be wild. <laughs> this love, episode, for that, love for that guy to avoid some lawsuits. This episode got better once we started talking about spoiler culture and everything. I do think that you'll disagree with yourself from what you said at the beginning of the conversation about like, yeah, but it's not really a spoiler. I bet if you saw one, once we got to the still part of the conversation, that's when we really got humming. I think that if you didn't see an episode and you saw a still with text and a quote or something, you'd be pretty fucking mad. I'd be mad. You, you, maybe you'd understand. Or maybe you'd I, be like, yeah, I'd be, this, I'd, be I'd be like bummed, but I would, I, so much of like the spoiler discourse is like, one side just taking no accountability or like no responsibility like you put yourself at that place you didn't like what you saw it's not it's not a hundred percent on the other people like just giving you something you didn't want to see yeah you went there yeah i don't know i think we've just come such a long way that we don't spoil movies that's incredible to me what what good people i i had this thought the other day which is Sports gambling, and I believe I tweeted this, has made it so fucking easy to get people to watch shit you want them to watch. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, hey, I'm on the Oilers tonight. Makes all of my friends watch the Oilers, and then I get to text my friends about the Oilers. And I'm so glad that exists, but I'm so mad that sports is where it exists. Because I would cho- I would have chosen it for, like, music or movies. or Like, imagine if there was a way... For you to get me to watch, what was the show with the the uh, the toys or something? Yeah, Andor. What if there was like a hey, uh, I'm on Andor, uh, plus two twenty five. I'd be like fuck yeah, and then I would end up watching Andor. Isn't it kind of a shame that it's wasted on something as stupid as sports? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like it's it's you know it has to be sports because sports for the most part aren't scripted, depending on who you want to believe. Oof. But I don't know if you've watched. Uh, is it called uh, macro dosing? Micro dosing? Uh, macro dosing. Yeah. Yeah. I I sure I haven't I haven't listened to it, but I did see the Arian Foster. Arian Foster said the NFL was scripted. Uh, incredible, incredible comment that like was clearly just joking about, and so many places ran with that. You think it was joking? Oh, um, sorry. I'd I, watch it again. I went off script. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, Fuck, man. A friend of the podcast, Evan, is now like an oil man, even though he he like watched the Islanders growing up, but doesn't know a ton about hockey. But he's like tailed me on a couple of Oilers bets. And now he'll text me. He'll be like, dude, like, how the fuck 
can teams get anything done against that Oilers power play? And I'm so fucking yeah, right. happy. So, so it makes it makes people so much smarter about the sport that they're betting on. Like I I know friends that will like watch hockey, but they won't really like retain anything. They'll just yeah. watch it with like the lights off and be like, oh, this is fun moving stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm I'm glad that it's making people smarter. It it does like somewhat it somewhat like bums me out that like hockey's gonna, definitely going to be a beneficiary of this just because fewer people watch hockey. Yeah. So it will get people on on board with hockey but it, it only bums me out because uh hockey is the worst sport to bet on and it is like the in my mind it is like the the sport that doesn't need the gambling hook because hockey it's is just crazy playoff enough. hockey yeah. is crazy enough it's captivating it's it's very captivating um and it's extremely hard to bet on so like I don't know it, for it to to be like one of the bigger beneficiaries of it when it one doesn't need it and two like doesn't really support the betting model very much. Um, it, it's like such a random sport, but I'm happy if, with more people watching hockey always. I'm glad that the, uh, uh, the the group chats have been fucking active. Yo, yeah, my group chats have ruled. It helps that uh, friend of the podcast, Rich, likes the oil man content. Uh, basically, if you don't like the oil man content, I've got to be a fucking nightmare these days but like one of my friends is a big there will be blood guy mm -hmm. and he's not a huge hockey guy big bruins fan but like doesn't really uh go crazy about the entire league but like he's into the oilers stuff because the oil man stuff and then another one of our friends is betting on them just because it's crazy but even even like evan said the other day so uh tonight's game which is yet to be played uh, the Oilers are minus like 280 or something. Mm -hmm. And Evan, after watching like three games, is like, why the hell are the Oilers minus 280? It's absolutely 50 50 this game <laughs> and i was like oh good yeah so you've figured it out i i don't know vegas has not figured out the oilers yet because uh, you know this may age poorly because this famously podcast is not live and the game is in a few hours but the uh the kings are like minus 130 on getting a goal and a half and i'm like dad have you watched the oilers like Wait, are they really? Yeah, about I, to add that to the oil man parlay. I I, I bet on the the Kings plus one and a half because I was like, the Oilers are just incapable of playing the most entertaining game. So they could have a three goal lead in the third period. They would win by a goal or they'd lose. Yeah. So take the goal and a half at minus one thirty, which is like probably what the money line should be for yeah. the Kings. Like, <laughs> like I, it seems crazy. I'll say though to people. Uh, if you do want to get into hockey, the Oilers are by far the best team to watch because it does make they make you understand hockey, I think, better than any team. You get to see, obviously, the best players. They have two guys, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, who legitimately have like both won MVPs, are incredible. And they are so uh they're not terrible defensively, but they're very absent-minded or uh they just don't care about defense, really. So, like, yeah. you get to see what it looks like when you don't play defense. So, th there's just like, everything about the Oilers is very obvious. So, you'll get what, and like, when they're on the power play, you get why being on a power play is good when you have top offensive players. Like, everything is very simple. And they're like they're gonna end up losing, and they're gonna fuck everything up, and and you get to find out like how important goaltending is. Yeah, too. like it's a good point. They're very, that... they're a very good team for like hockey one hundred and one. Mm -hmm, because like the, the Bruins are, the Bruins just do everything well. Mm -hmm. So like that's that's maybe like a graduate level course of like understanding like, what would make yeah, them you, so you, good. But you only know that the Bruins do everything well when you know hockey, and you're like, oh, they're doing that shit well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So get get started with the Oilers. Got to shout out by the way. Uh, Got to shout out Miles, a.k.a. Sir Collect-A-Lot, with the one-of-one one Edmonton Oil Man action figure. He's been... This This is the second Sir Collect-A-Lot piece I've owned. What's the first I, one? Uh, I got a Carl Havoc one-of-one okay. one that okay. is incredible. You, you, you bought that one. Like, yeah. you won the auction for that one. Yeah, like, I, I won the auction this for that one. This one you, you had... You, you uh, commissioned. I, yes, yeah. I was like, hey, uh, 
Edmonton Oil Man toy mm-hmm. when. And he does commissions. We've talked about Miles and Sir Collect a lot, a lot. But uh, he he's th- doing shit with like Tyler the Creator. Did a like the rap caviar thing whole nine. He's done a ton of stuff. I think he's he's done stuff with like uh, Big Cat mm-hmm. and just everybody. He's way. It's so weird to know someone who does any social media better than Pete, but. He legitimately does Instagram. I'm not saying this to put you down. Like he does it better than both of us. Yeah, for sure. By, you 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 admitted early in this episode. Like Instagram is a pretty tough nut to crack. Yeah. If you just constantly do dope shit, though, you seemingly get rewarded. You Miles do, you does do, dope shit. You do dope shit and you play the game, and he does both. Does he play the game? He plays the game. What do you mean? Like he he's in comments a lot. Oh right. And in comments makes you. Uh, uh, very visible, and he has a particular strategy where he's like. Yo, I make I make cool toys, and he'll like he'll like shape his comment in ways that somebody browsing that post yeah. will be like, oh, let me click on this, and he's so good at it. I'm about to hire Miles for yeah, right. uh, Instagram takeover. <laughs> Miles asked us if he, if we could hire him. Yeah, and so we unfortunately have like a list of they know who they are, but we do have a list of people we want to hire. Miles uh, is very near the top of that list. Miles is like top 10. Easy. <laughs> but like imagine if we could hire people. This podcast famously, uh, we don't uh, pay ourselves for this podcast. It uh, We buy cool things and take trips and eat uh, apple hand pies and stuff. Mm-hmm. But imagine if we could hire people, man. Imagine if like Miles was just doing a toy right now of us as we're doing this. That would rock. Shit. Um, one more point on the uh, on the oil men, and then I do want to talk about a conversation that we had with Miles last uh-huh. week. Um, oil men, uh, obviously, a lot of talent there. Shout out to my guy Evan Bouchard, who fucking rocks, and I'm glad that he's finally kind of like. It seems like this is his coming out party. Yeah, because he's been awesome in the first round and i want to give myself a pat on the back because i knew he was going to be awesome really yeah i uh i remember writing about him i want to say like 2018 before the draft and i was like yo this guy skates so well has an absolute bomb of a shot yeah is such a good offensive player he should probably get drafted like before a few of the guys that are getting or like at least like who might he might be as good as a few of the guys that are being hyped up as being like because that draft had uh, uh, Rasmus Dahlin, it had Quinn Hughes, had Noah Dobson, and like all those guys were talked about a lot. And I was like, Bouchard's gonna be as good as like most of those guys. Yeah. And so glad he's he's coming through. I, I'm a big Bouchard guy. It uh, sucks that, by the way, that reminds me. It sucks that you can't in any of these sports books like bet someone's like, gonna have is an this awesome guy gonna be awesome season. <laughs> yeah like i know or no, like I, for like a draft i like, mean, oh, i'm already in the middle of a you know about the bet with evan right about yes masataka yeah, yeah. yoshida yeah the the group chat is uh putting is really leaning on evan these days <laughs> like uh-oh he looks pretty awesome I had a pretty good weekend so i just have a bet with one of my friends that uh player on the red Sox is gonna be awesome and that's all the bet is yeah just, there's like no if he's awesome no, i win yeah there's no quantifying <laughs> that it's just no no just be, be a man and just admit. Like, be a man. Yeah. Just, uh, just be, say I'm awesome. Yeah. Say, say that he's awesome and you go from there. But like before the postseason, uh, we were texting our group chat about uh, Tyler Bertuzzi. This is going to, he's going to get a bunch of points. He just, his type of play just works for the postseason. Pucks are going to go in the net off his ass and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of the postseason, there was no like bet the over on points for a player the whole postseason. Drives me crazy. Yeah, I mean, like it's tough because you have to. Because you're it. factoring in like how far does it go? Right. Yeah. So it's it's a tough thing to to bet on. But like, if you can bet like a team to win the Eastern Conference Final, why can't you bet on like one of their players to exactly? Yeah. So uh, and then the the conversation that I had with Miles last week was uh, we were talking about shrinking the TV oh, show, yeah, which we are both big fans of. He just made a shrinking toy, yeah, and I like DM'd him and I was like. Yo, why the fuck didn't you tell me about the shrinking toy when we were having a long conversation about shrinking this week? And he was like, do we talk about shrinking? Burn. And I was like, what the fuck? We had like a lengthy conversation about how good that show is, about how 
uh, Harrison Ford doesn't need to act at all in it because oh, he just right. plays like a surly old man. I said zero words in this conversation and I remember it. Yeah, right. So uh, I was like, what the hell? What the hell, man? And he was like, uh, may have had a few too many light beers. Oh, no, wait a second. You may have had that conversation with Al on. No, I had it with both. Oh, you, you're mm. just a real shrinking head. Yes. Yeah. So nice. it's. I mean, we... You got mentionitis. <laughs> that's why I wanted to bring it up, because I keep finding myself talking about shrinking a whole lot, so... And I, I've i seen... Uh, I've already gotten, like, I think two to three uh, tweets being like, I checked the show out because of you. Nice. Thanks so much, because Ooh. it's awesome. So I'm going to have to give a heavy recommend for shrinking. It is not a not a perfect show. It's uh, it's a very fun show to get lost in. It's a very entertaining show, very funny. Characters are great. What I will say, this is the best way that I can sell it, I guess, is I've seen a lot of people um, kind of getting out on Ted Lasso or being frustrated yeah. with Ted Lasso. Yep, bad They're, right now. I, I thought it was okay until – I haven't seen this latest episode, but like the one before that, I was like, all right, this is – it's being too Ted Lasso for me. Um, this, my comparison was to Ted Lasso, and it's an easy comparison because it's um, it's uh, Apple TV and it's from... Uh, Bill Lawrence? No. Well, yes, it's from Bill Lawrence, but uh. he works with uh, Brett Goldstein. Yeah. Who is... Yeah. Uh, 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 Roy uh, Kent. Roy Kent, who also writes on uh, Ted Lasso. So, like, it, there's a lot of the same parts there. And it's uh, a lot of, like, similar vibes. But Shrinking is great. If you're out on Ted Lasso, let Shrinking be your Ted Lasso replacement. I'll do it. I mean, I don't have uh, a ton of time either. But, and I've really gotten a hankering for to watch There Will Be Blood <laughs> before an Oilers game sometime. But even then, I don't, have, I don't have time to watch There Will Be Blood. The movie's like a fucking bajillion hours long, right. as it should be. Yeah, yeah right. I That's want- not a complaint. <laughs> But you, you and I have even been like talking to each other in uh, there will be blood quotes, mainly just because we're trying to stay fresh on oil men stuff. But a you know lot what? of give me the blood, Eli. A lot of, give, give me the blood. <laughs> I've abandoned my boy. Uh, but shrinking my son and my partner. <laughs> but oh man, it's it's weird. Like some of the oil man stuff doesn't hit, and some do. I did a uh, this is my son and my partner for uh, Leon Drysaddle the other night. I truly do feel. Like Sunday night, game four, everybody was watching that game. Yes. It was as great. It should have been. Like football people were liking the oil man stuff and get it. I was like, the oil yeah. is the easiest point of entry for anybody who's like, hey, maybe I'll like hockey. Because yes. like I said, they are they have two of the best players in the world and they are incapable of playing boring games. It's man, I love it. But I like all these series right now. But anyway. Did uh, you uh, know uh, that There Will Be Blood was based on a novel? Yeah, you know what it's called? Oil. Oil. <laughs> I tweeted it. I tweeted that book the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, by Upton Sinclair. 